Hi friends, welcome to Srinu Technologies, myself Ram Kumar. Today we will discuss more details about Process Studio in Blue Prism. Okay? So in our previous video you have seen how we can do a circular path and then what are the contouring plays. Right? So contouring play is used for debugging which we have seen. It means how to speed up and slow the process execution and then how we can debug the things which we have configured. So one such kind of thing is again we have one more feature called breakpoints. So breakpoints are nothing but at a specific stage if you want to stop the process, right? If you can stop the process and then see what are the parameter values or the data item variable values which are present at that moment and then how it is being executed, you can use this breakpoints. So let's quickly jump into the tool and see how we can uh, keep a breakpoint to our previous uh, circular path and then we will learn from there, right? Let's go back to the tool. So this is the circular path we have seen earlier and then when we are doing it we are able to pause it, right? So pause and adjusting the controlling place, these all are used for the debugging purpose only but still it will be not example when you are trying to do a pause means you might not sure whether on at which location you will think that you have multiple stages, you have 10 stages and then you are not sure example if you want to check at fifth stage you want to see what is going wrong. Then in that case when you are using pause, it is a, it, there may be a chance that you are thinking to pause at 5th stage but it might jump to 6th stage, right? So you, in order to um, just stop at the particular stage, we need to use a break point, okay? So that is how we will see here. Example, max value reached. Here I want to see a break point, means during developer purpose only we will do this, right? It's not during actual... Uh, we, when we are running this process in production or something, we will not use the breakpoints or the breakpoints will not be working. So this is only the debugging during development. Okay. So what I am doing is I am selecting the stage. If you see here, I have just clicked on the stage. I have just clicked on the stage. Right click. And if you see here, there is something called breakpoint. So I will select it. So if you see right, there is a red color around this. So what will happen is, when you have started the process, what will happen in this series is, the counter will increment the loop counter, the value by 1, and then once this value is reached, before the decision is made, see, when the breakpoint is there, breakpoint will alert you stating that the stage which you want to monitor has been reached. Okay, you are getting me right? So it's not that the stage the execution inside the stage is happened and then it is giving an alert for you. No. The breakpoint will alert you before the stage is executed. If you are keeping, you can keep multiple breakpoints. I am keeping here, if you see here, if you see here, the counter is being selected as a breakpoint. What will happen is once we click on start, the counter will be coming here, means the control will come here to the counter and then the breakpoint will give an alert for you but it will not increment the value. It will increment the value once you have crossed that stage actually, the stage is completed. So let's, I am keeping breakpoints at two places for your understanding and then once we are moving ahead, we will see how we are, how we can manage it. So I will keep in slow mode. Okay, it's fast or slow doesn't matter because breakpoint will stop the process. If you see here, I will keep it in very fast, but because of breakpoint, it will stop at the intended stage. Right? Let's see this. The, the process is in full fast mode and then I am running this. If you see here, just started, it got started and then stopped at counter and the breakpoint was reached. That's what it is saying. The breakpoint which you thought was reached and then the process is stopped. So if you see it on the top, on the top see this? We did not click on pause button, the, the, but the program is, the execution is paused actually. So we can close this window alert but still the program will not resume you have to click on go until to resume but before that if you want to see this if you see here counter means what we have to do here the calculation stage to increment the value of counter by one if you see here but the value is still zero as i said when you are using breakpoint the control will come there before the stage is executed the system will alert you so if you see the value current value is zero initial value is zero current value did not increment but we will do a 
go now. We will resume the pause and my expectation is it will just jump to decision box and again one more alert, alert will come here. That is what is expected. So let's see. So I am clicking on go now. So if you see here, it, now the control came to decision stage and again it stopped and again the alert came. I am closing the alert. Now you have to see here the decision is not made but the control came from counter calculation to decision stage. If you see the data item value, the current value is 1, right? Initial value is 0. Means the, what is executed into the stage, we are seeing it in the data item and then the decision box came. When you see on, when you again say go, what will happen is the decision will be made as the loop counter value is 1 which is less than the max value, it will go into the no direction and then it will go back to the counter stage. So let's see that. So the, but still the process is in fast mode but it is not able to proceed because there are break points in the program which we have kept for debugging purpose. So this is a very important thing you have to understand. So I will again click on go. If you see here, quickly it went to counter. So it will stop because it's a hard stop. When we are setting breakpoints, it's a hard stop. Okay. So what I will do is this is how it happened. So decision happened, it went to counter back. So what I will do is you can pause this and you can remove the breakpoints. No problem. No need for us to um, reset and go to start and then remove. Example I am in what I am I am there in what I am there in loop one. But still it is I am able to uh, remove the breakpoints and I can resume from there. One more important thing is we can do is the current value which is there, the value is 1 now. I will make it 10. You are understanding right? I am changing the loop counter value means what? I am just keeping from 1 to 10. If you see now, when the counter stage executes, the counter will become from 10 to 11, not from 1 to 2. So this is the beauty of Blue Prism here where example think that there are thousands of records and then you are very sure that when you are iterating through each record you are you sure that you are, you are you are getting problem with 900 record no need for us to process all the 100 1 to 899 records you can directly keep the value as 900 and then you can check debug the process how it is happening at a particular moment so let's see i will keep it in slow so that you will see how it, the value is incrementing from 10 right so now if you see here it is from 11 it started so again i will do a pause if you see here the pause is made at anchor now i will keep the i will make the loop counter as 20 or okay i'll make the loop counter as 15 so now if you see here loop counter is 15 when it comes to counter this calculation stage the value will become 16 so we can plug and play like this and then again i will do a so if you see here, again it went to count anchor and again I paused it. So now I will make the value as something like, I cannot change the initial value and I should not also, but I will increment the counter value something like 200 or 2000, anything, nothing will stop it. So what will happen is, it will come here, it will come to the counter plus plus calculation stage and then it will become 200 will become 201 and the decision will say that um, the maximum value is reached and it will come out of the loop but it will not throw any error for us right let's see this so it went to counter if you can see the data item it became 201 decision box will come out so simple right easy to understand easy to configure so this is how it is the breakpoint can be easily used so let's go back to our ppt yeah now we will see one more data item which is called collections. So if you want to have, what is the use of collections? So collection will hold multiple values of similar data type. That is what you should understand. Means you have 10 string items, you have 10 numbers, 1000 numbers, 2000 uh, text items, 2000 date items. So all that will be stored into a collection. Not only only one string actually, you can still you can store some kind of excel data in the form of rows and columns in collection right that is the use of data item here it is similar to it is similar to hash table in uh, c sharp code but like we will see how we can create a collection data type and then 
how we can uh, use this collection into our code we will see now right so this just for your simplicity collections means it will it can store similar data type values can multiple values can be stored into one data item that is called collections right it's not about only one column you can have multiple columns and each column will have specific data type means column one can have text data type column two can have number data type something like that okay let's go back to the tool and then see how we can use a collection or create a collection the existing thing we can add it but what i'm doing is for the to understand you better i'm just removing it and then so this is a collection so when i drag the collection date stage into this so it's a variable like similar to data item so difference between data item is data item will have a data type and then it can store only one value at one time right but collection it can have multiple data types and multiple values can be stored we will see a sample collection now so what i'm doing is i will keep the collection as order collection okay order collection so no need for you to like this the naming convention which is used for data variable is very simple here like you can give your own convenient name there is no uh, you can give underscores you can give plus you can use special characters anything but make sure you are following one kind of structure so that all variables will be looking very fine and the maintainability will be very nice okay so that should be kept in mind here so order collection i have just given the name which i want to prepare the collection so now this is the window of a collection so the properties of a collection can be created here so when i say add field add field means if you take an excel sheet or a hash table anything it will have multiple columns right so you need to have a heading for the column so that is the field right so when i say when i click on add field which is the, which the button is available on the right side so it is if you see here it is asking for the field name and what is the type so i will in my order i will add three fields okay so i clicked on add for total three times now i'll give each thing so first thing is what i'll keep is order order id this is my first variable so order id will be a number okay next one is order name so anyways name should be in text and then what i can say is order order uh, location we can use so something like this again we can have text anything you can have date also means when the order came or flag any flag anything for now i am using this text so we have got three field names so these are the column headings you have to understand you have to understand when you are creating this fields you have to understand it is like showcased or it is understood by blue prism in what way so when we are adding fields these are nothing but the column names so there are two things called initial values and current values so as in normal data item we have seen initial values are the ones which we are setting before the process is run so current values are values which when the process is in execution the values which are it is treating is showed under current values okay so we will go to initial values tab and then if you see here there are no records now but i want to add some multiple records now records in the sense in excel sheet if you consider a simple excel sheet records means number of rows right so when i click on the add row on the to the right so it will add so many records if i can, if i click on remove it will be removing from the bottom if you see here add row is added to the bottom remove row is removing from the bottom so i'll keep some five for now so order id 1 2 3 1 2 four i'm just filling random numbers 1 to 7 so order name order name i have to give it is uh, order 1 2 3 order 1 2 4 order 1 2 5 order 1 2 6 order 1 2 7 simple order location i want to keep some locations like okay pune uh, chennai 
right? So if you can give the full names also. So Chennai, Hyderabad, right? What is it? Uh, Kolkata, and then um, what else? Delhi. Okay, I just give some random names. Okay, this is what the order is, right? So this is how it is, and then once you click on OK, so total values which are there in the show in the collection is, if you see here, I will just increment the size for your visibility. So if you see here, there are some items. So now it is shown as empty. Why it is shown as empty? Okay. So I need to refresh this. So when I said refresh, if you see here, even though the items are there, so refresh and save is important for us. Make sure you save at regular intervals. If you see here, row 1 of 5 means what you understand is currently the control is at row 1 and the total number of records stored in the order collection are 5. Okay, this is what you have to understand. So you can see here there, there are three columns and then initial values if you see here the three field names which we have given are shown as columns and then there are five records. Okay. Now this is how a collection is there and then uh, I think you hope you have understood how to create a data item and then we will go to the next topic where we will see how we are able to use this collection. So this is what the collection we have seen and the collection name is my orders here we have kept orders collection there and then row one of three is here means there are you should understand is there are total three records which are prepared okay now we will move on to some interesting topic called loops loop is nothing but this is a stage okay so which using which you can retrieve each value from a collection See, circular path is different, loop is different. Circular path is same thing you want to iterate multiple times that is circular path. Loop is you have an entity, collection is an entity, it is having multiple records in it and you want to process each record, means you need to go through each row or each record, right? So loop is the stage where you can get each data and then you can process the each data and then you can go one by one like this. Right? So that is the difference between loop and circular path. Don't get confused. Circular path means similar one step or multiple steps if you want to iterate for multiple times. That is circular path. Some series of steps to be iterated multiple times. Circular path is that. Loop is you. some entity is there, some collection is there, some multiple um, records are there in a collection. So you want to iterate with each row each record in a collection loops are used i'm telling multiple times so that you will not confuse between loops and circular path right let's go back to the tool and understand how we can iterate to through the records which we have added into the collection right let's go back to the tool now so i have not told you about all the stages at one shot because we are using some scenario and then now we are using it and when the scenario comes we are telling going to the particular stage which is best fit for the stage. Now we are not using calculation, now we are not using anything. We have to use a loop stage. If you see here on the left, there is a loop stage here. So when we are dragging here and then dropping, if you see here, before I drop it, right, before I leave, leave my mouse uh, left one, so it is only one actually we are seeing, only, there is only one stage you might be thinking, only one box, right. When I leave it, there are two boxes here. So I'm bringing the end into the end. So if you see here, there's a loop start and end. Even though I have pulled one stage or one box into the grid, we have got two boxes. But two boxes together are called only one stage, which is loop stage. So what you have to understand is, there are some stages which will be coming only one box at a time. There are some stages which are coming with multiple things. Something like loop. So loop has a tail, what I call this as a tail, means when you are calling, when you are pulling the head, I am pulling one more loop here, if you see, I am pulling the head of the loop and then I am getting a tail also for it. Any number of things, it will be just a number added to it and it, the system will manage it. If you remove this 1 and 2, I am selecting 1 and 2 together, delete, the loop 3 is there. 
I can drag one more, it came one. So the number is start one means it's not that only the value is one. So by default, it's given a default value. You can edit the loop start. So what I'm going to do is I will remove this and then I will give a new name for this loop. I will double click on this loop. What I will say is ours is order thing, right? So order loop. This is the loop name I am giving, right? So order loop start. This is the name of the box now. So collection. So by default, blue prism, if you see here, if there are some data items, other data items like name or loop count or anything also, those all will not be shown here because the date loops are meant for dealing with collections only, right? So if you see here, only the collection data items are only shown in the drop down. So if you are having multiple collections, those all collections will be listed here. So for now, I am selecting the collection which I have created, which is our order collection. So if you see here now, so loop order start, loop order. Okay, so both is having the same name. So it will be confusing. So I am saving order loop. Okay, so order loop, order loop. So but there is a change in the just a symbol. So based on the symbol, based on the direction of the curves, you have to understand what is the starting and what is the ending. Okay, if you keep upside down like this also, but still based on the, uh, the box size or the box dimension, you have to understand that this, the selected one is, have, is the starting and now the selected one is the ending of the loop. Okay, so I'll come to this and then what we want to do is, once I get a loop, I want to read each um, location. That is the purpose I want to do. What we can do is we will take a data item. Okay. And then we will keep the value as, we will keep the value as, name as location. And then at the tape as text. I am not giving any initial value. What my intention is when I am looping through this order collection, so I want the location of the order and then the the value should be shown in the data item which I said, which I have just created. Right? So that is my intention here. So what we need to do, once we loop through each record, I will get the details. I need to assign the detail to my data item. Means what? I need to do some assignment operation. Assignment operation can be done in which stage? Yes, you might be correct. So calculation stage calculation stage is the place where we can get the values from uh, or the, we can use some expression or assignment operators and then we can assign to the value so i'm double clicking it and then i will say i will say the calculation thing is assign loc or assign location this is the name of my calculation where the value to be stored yes your guess is right so it should be location but how we can do now so if you see here we have created some collections. If you, one thing you should have noticed is on the right side when you are using this expression or when you are setting the calculation properties, you will be seeing apart from this expression section, you will be something called, you will be seeing data type pane actually. What are the data types which are available here? So, so what is happening is you can see that in collections there are some collections which are created. The collection which we created is shown here. If you click on the plus, so these are the three field items or the column names which are available. So what we want to read now for each record, we want to read the, what is the location. So what am, when you are inside a collection, I am closing this and then to explain you more better, if you see now, order loop, in between the order loop, we have calculation stage. Once you are in between this means, when the loop is in progress, you will be able to access each record at once. So, suppose once you go to the calculation stage and then I will see the collection. So, the collection, order collection is the value which we want. I will drag that as a variable into the expression stack. If you see here, so it is, it is a dot operation if you see here. Order collection is the collection dot order location. So, when you are saying this, what will happen at back end is, for that particular record, what is the location value will be seen and that value is assigned to the location data item. Right? Okay. So this is what is happening. Okay. So if you want to have one more thing, 
I want to have one more datum which is order ID. Okay. So what I will do is I'm keeping one more variable. So what is it? We should have order ID is our name and the type is number. We should make sure the data types are same. Otherwise the data items will fail. We might be getting an error and then it will say that data items are not matching. Okay. So, so I'm not giving any value here. I just said okay so if you see here the items are empty but what i will do is in the calculation is so this there's only one calculation i did what i did is for the current order location assign it to the location data item we want one more collection uh, sorry we want one more calculation stage so i'm pulling the so this is assign location is one part and then uh, let me adjust so that it is somewhat beauty is added I will just try to so other calculation is what I'm doing is assign order ID this is the name of the expression so just guess if you see here there is one more data item created under the numbers thing so order ID is the one which we want to keep it and then inside collection we have order ID the one thing is you have to understand is the order ID field which is listed into the order collection can be pulled here or the numbers we are directly seeing see based on the data types the classification is done here the segregation is done here for our own easiness actually the tool is providing this feature for us to understand okay order ID is, is a number you can directly understand what is the type example if you see the collection here when you are seeing the values under the collection you are not sure the name is order ID but I am not sure whether the data type is type or it's a text or number or anything so if you are in such kind of confusion come to the numbers you are expecting a number right if you see here order ID is listed as under numbers category or text if you see here order collection and order name are listed under text category so you'll understand what is the data type of that particular column so you can pull from any place I will pull from here and then what is happening is what is the assignment operation happening is for that order ID in that particular record or row assign it to order ID data variable so this is what I am doing here so the important thing we have to do is what we have to do will this run so let me do a refresh if you see here there are five errors what is the error yes there are missing links here so what I will do is I have to select the link operator and then connect the dots if you see here it is not a circular path it's a loop so what will happen is so let me save it save so what will happen is the control will come to the order loop right and then each record for each record it will read the each record location and order ID will be just assigned to the data items which we have created it will come to the order loop end stage and then from this end stage it will go back to the order loop start stage which is this one thing you have to understand is we are not keeping any anchors here the blue prism itself we will take that into consideration when you are using a loop stage okay so I am keeping I am keeping a breakpoint here at the end so that we will understand after the first record is read whether we have got those into the data items or not okay so I have done a refresh there are no errors let me run this I will run this in slow mode for your convenience okay if you see here as just said on start loop start assign location it is look it is see location Pune came already came and then that end stage came so the alert came so I'm closing the alert so the still it is an end of first record so the first record processing is over means we have we are able to read those values here now I will say I'll remove the breakpoint so that we can iterate in a faster way so I will just say next so it will go to the loop start again if you see a loop it, and then it came to assign location assign order ID and then order loop now it will go back location is Hyderabad or ID is 125 next loop location is Kolkata order ID 126 next record again location is Delhi order ID is 
this thing. Now all things are over, it will come to the end. So simple. So if you see here, 5 rows to 5 rows, the processing is over. That's what is showing in there on the collection. Location is the latest value it is having. So now I'll do what I'll do is I'll do a refresh and then we will see how it is running in fast mode. I think you, you might not catch up with manualize, but just see. See how fast it is getting. So this is how the process will be done in a much faster way using loops. Hope you have understood. Keep watching our videos. Keep learning.